good idea and we are recording now excellent well you guys thanks for joining us we hope you uh all have a great long weekend ahead whatever that means feels like a never-ending cycle of weekends and days and what day is it but tgif um today we're going to cover moxie works we're going to go over a buyer tour hopefully we got some buyers and some luxury buyers uh, in town. And then we're going to go over a custom page, how to create a custom page to send to your prospect or your client, making sure that you know how to use that system for different things other than advanced CMAs, which is obviously the kind of primary focus of Moxie Presents. So Joe, why don't you take away and I will keep up with chat and interject with questions as we go. I love it. Okay. So what we're going to do as broken down is start with Moxie. Now, many of you on this call, I could tell, have already been in a Moxie class at least once or twice, which is great. Um, this is one of those products that the more you use it, the better you're going to get at it, um, like a lot of technology. So in other words, the, the more you practice and make presentations that you might not even show to anybody, uh, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Um, first things first, uh, if you're having troubles with Moxie, 99% of it is always because you're not using Chrome. So um, I've had agents that have said, oh, I've been using Safari with Moxie for a long time. It's never given me a problem before. That might be the case. Uh, same with Internet Explorer. Um, but there, there's always something that goes wrong. It's usually in the search fields when you're looking for properties uh, where that kind of breaks or in the filter fields. So first and foremost, make sure you're using Chrome. Uh, most of the platforms that we use here um, at the brokerage are best supported by using Chrome. Uh, if you forgot how to log into uh, Moxie, you can come over here to the intranet because Jamie, all good things start at the intranet. Uh, over here on the left hand side, you have all these different links that you can use and we'd be interested right here in this one that just says Moxie present login. Uh, that'll pop a, a new tab in your browser for you and take you straight into the product. If you can't uh, get to the intranet for some reason and you don't remember, you just type in present like you're making a presentation. So present.bhhsutah.com, and that will also take you to Moxie uh, login. Uh, we are operational on all three of our MLSs that the brokerage uses. So that is the Park City MLS, the Wasatch Front MLS, and now the Washington County uh, MLS. So if you have listings on those, you can send me a request if you want to be on more than one MLS. Uh, most of you that have um, uh, MLS numbers on both MLSs, you're already logged as that. The reason why that's important is that if you have a listing that you want to show somebody, today we're talking about the buyer tour, and let's say that for some reason you like the way it's described or the photos, oftentimes the photos are different from one MLS to another, and you're not seeing what you want to see, you can actually go into uh, Moxie and you can uh, switch what MLS that you're currently assigned to. Um, so once you log in, you're going to be at your dashboard. This is what your dashboard looks like. Um, and sometimes you might not have, if you haven't really uh, messed around with Moxie, you're not going to have any of these presentations there that you can play with. Uh, so you're going to go over here to the upper right hand corner where it says create new. And you'll notice that when we first got Moxie uh, back in the summer of 2018, there were really only two presentation types. There was a buyer presentation type and then there was a seller presentation type. But since then they've added uh, multiple presentation types. Essentially what that means is these are all just default templates. So kind of think of it as like a PowerPoint presentation. Do you remember when you used to first do PowerPoint presentations and you'd had slides and every slide had five or seven different items on it. And then you started learning how you can insert pictures and you started learning how to do all these other types of elements. And that's really kind of where we're at there. Uh, for this presentation type, we're going to go ahead and pick buyer tour. There are some specifics uh, for the buyer tour that um, are pretty slick and they're designed to have an interactive experience between you and your potential buyer. So I select buyer tour as my presentation type and then I hit continue and then it's going to ask you uh, what kind of template that you want. And so for our case right here, we're just going to use the template we built, which is the default buyer tour template. And then of course we hit continue and then it's going to ask us, who are you building this buyer tour for? Like who are you, who's this going to be? Uh, you're going to send this to. And so for this, we're just going to call this the tech training team because that was the first thing I could think of off the top of my head. But that would, of course, be the names of your clients or uh, the name of the person that you're sending this presentation to. So you can see right here that I'm currently using the, the, the WFR. So this is the Utah Real Estate Choice. If you, again, if you're a member of multiple MLSs, your MLS choices will show up there. Um, as you're going through and, and trying to make that happen. 
we'll just keep it here at the uh, Utah Real Estate because uh, where I'm at right now in Davis County, uh, there is a lot of activity. So a buyer tour would make a lot of sense up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit create. And as you know, Moxie is one of those platforms that doesn't require you to save or to download or hit the save button or anything like that. It's a constant wheel. Uh, whenever you see that little wheel um, going on, that just means that's where uh, your presentation is going to be auto saved for you, which is really, really slick. Um, so you can see right now, instead of it being the seller tour where we start with a subject property, this one, it actually tells you where, where is your buyer going to start from? What, it, what is it that they're going to do uh, that's going to allow them to start? So this gives them a starting location. So oftentimes this will just be their home. Uh, but if they want to see like homes that are around, let's say that they work in a particular environment or they want to see homes that are very much around a certain city, uh, you can plug in any address. But this is assuming where they're going to take off from. Okay. So if you look right here, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put in my own address because that makes it nice and easy. And I set the location. And just like our subject property, it puts a star that says, okay, here's where they're going to launch from, okay? Um, and if you want to, you can upload an image of the place that they're starting from, but you know, odds are pretty good. You don't need to worry about something like that. Because again, this is probably about taking them from where they are to where they wanna be versus taking them in, in some other direction. So I go ahead and I set the location here. Uh, it does the mapping for me. And just like every other of the Moxie presentations, we're gonna follow this horizontal menu across the top, right? We're gonna start with our options, then we're gonna to go to the search, to, to the actual properties that we want them to see, and then we're gonna to go to the listings and put them in an order, and then we're gonna go ahead and design that presentation to be interactive. The other thing that I like about Moxie, it's one of the key elements when Jamie and I were looking at this kind of stuff that we decided <clears throat> it has to be mobile formatted. So you notice that the reason we push so hard to do Things like marketing resource or dot loop or moxie is that all of them work on your phone as well as they work on your computer at home so that's a really good tip you can do this kind of wherever you are uh, moving around so once i've got the setting point here i'm just going to go ahead and hit continue uh, it's going to do its little thing where it goes out and it does an auto save for me and now it's saying okay well based on the neighborhood that you've given us for a start where do you want them to go look like where where do you want them to search you know as opposed to uh, your starting point and so this is based on the search field just like we had in our um, our listing presentation the search field we have location based we have mls number based now if you've been on the mls and you already have certain um uh, sh stuff that you want them to see because you've already told them they've already given you some parameters you've got some hot sheets set up um if you didn't attend jake breen's um prospecting training this week go back and watch that on the intranet or on our youtube channel it was amazing the way that he sets up these hot sheets to come to his inbox and then and design those. But um, in any case, you have the opportunity to come in here and really make something cool happen. Well, so if we wanna stay in the roughly the same zip code, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in my zip code and we're gonna do this. The map's gonna immediately change. It's gonna kind of orient to that particular uh, boundary on the zip code. And it's immediately gonna start loading all of the listings that have that zip code that are currently active on the MLS. So all I did was put in a zip code, I put in the starting address and I put in the zip code of where I think they want to visit uh, and it just loads all this information up for me. So now you think realistically in a buyer situation, we don't just want to hand them anything, right? Because we have a 1.7579 million uh, home here and right down the road, we're going to have one that's a lot less than that and we don't have the buyer that's going to have that kind of range of buying power. So how do we sort of refine this window, if you will, so that we can make this buyer tour worth their time. Well, I can come over here and the first cut we're gonna make is on price, okay? So we're gonna say it's gonna be at least 300 grand and their uh, top end of their budget is probably, let's say it's 675, but for just kicks, we're gonna say 650. So that gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Now, the minute I hit apply, the computer is eliminating anything outside of those ranges, right? So that means that in this particular example, if there's a great house that could work for them that's 655, you won't see it, right? Because you cut, this is the first big cut uh, in the edit. So just keep that in mind that sometimes when you put these filters in, the filters do exactly what they say they're gonna do. And sometimes that restricts you from having the kind of results that you might want. So we're just gonna hit the apply button here. And now I've got my rankings, right? And it's starting right now, it's giving me my most expensive, all, all the way down to my least expensive here. Um, and I've got, I got a lot of homes to choose from, right? 
So what you're doing as you're building this is you're starting to identify geographically maybe what areas they're, they're kind of taking a look at. So we can refine this even further. We could say that I got to have a minimum of four bedrooms, no maximum, and I got to have a minimum of three bathrooms, but no maximum. Okay. So I hit apply on that. So there, these are our first two big chunks. The first chunk was our price chunk. The second chunk was minimum beds and baths. And we went from 75 listings or whatever it was to 23, right? So now we're, we're chunking down this particular uh, area. And as you, I kind of like to do this with Moxie. As you see my mouse, is that I kind of just roll over the next uh, listing that's down there. It highlights on the map where those things are. And so if I'm like in an area, this is all East Layton, um, South uh, Weaver County here. Um, if, I, if I have, you know, if this is the right area they're looking in, I already know I'm set, right? So the zip code did what it was supposed to do and sort of anchor me in that particular geography. Of course, if I wanna make something a little bit different, I can then come over here to my map and I can change the radius that I'm searching in, or I can literally draw a shape and just say, you know, I wanna stay east of I-15, but I don't care how high I go or how low I go. I just wanna stay within these parameters. And the way I do that is just come over here. I take my zip code out. I go to my draw tool. Go to my quick draw, quick draw McGraw. And let's say, look, I'm interested in anything from Ogden down to Farmington and all the way back up, right? So that's a nice big, looks like a paramecium, some sort of strange cellular creature. But all I know is I did that, I did that search. You see what it's doing on here, the blue line? It's going to MLS, it still has my filters. Remember, I have my filters on all this stuff. So it's got like this, and now it's drawing me a list. So I have a lot more homes to choose from now because now I've stretched from Farmington all the way up uh, to the south part of Ogden. Uh, if I wanna take a bigger cut uh, at filters, I can click this third filter button. Right now, I'm only looking at single family. Uh, I'm, I don't have any square footage requirements. I don't have any lot size requirements. Uh, I don't have any year built requirements, but the more that I do with this, the more narrow my buyer search becomes. And so let's say, we'll put some square footage filters in here. Let's say it's gotta be at least 2000 square feet, no maximum. Um, and let's say we don't wanna look at any home that has been built after uh, 1995. So we'll just put in 1995 uh, and then we'll do that again. I hit apply. Uh, and so we went from our 66 number and now we're down to 37. Okay. So use the filters yeah. even. Yeah, sure. Regarding the filters, Jackie Bass had a great question um, is if you can designate a specific development uh, rather no. than just a draw radius. No, it doesn't do developments. It does sometimes pick up the neighborhood field. Like, so it just depends on how the MLS um, entry was put in. Uh, we, we see this a lot in Park City where the Park City agents know those neighborhoods so well, but they don't translate sometimes into the actual MLS listing. Um, so you can try uh, to put in development, but odds are pretty good that you're better off just working with this. And the other thing is that if you know that there's a development exists, you can actually zoom in on your map. So you can just take your map and just drag it right mm -hmm. to where the area that you want, and then just hit your plus sign until you get to the literal square blocks or whatever of that development, and then you zoom it in. I helped an agent with a uh, presentation this week and that's what we did. It was literally a five block radius because it was very similar uh, homes built in those same five blocks. And that was all she was interested in showing anyone was just those particular um, homes. And it worked out great. So yeah, don't be afraid to use the zoom uh, and the zoom out tool uh, and it'll change your listings as you go ahead and make that happen. See, even as we got in closer, it cut off our 33 to 30. So we'll, can, we can, um, you can operate it that way, uh, but you can't, I would say the success of you putting in a neighborhood and it actually understanding that neighborhood and getting the, the, the full complete active listings for that neighborhood are pretty low. Just because the, the MLS entries are not always accurate. So that's that. And the computer doesn't understand that your physical address means that neighborhood, right? It has to actually be entered in the neighborhood um, on the MLS entry box. So this is a really big, um, Field to choose from, you know, it's 37 listings here. I'm not sure that that's uh, a really good buyer tour, but let's just say we're gonna spread them out. Uh, we're gonna show them some stuff in Farmington and then we're gonna take them all the way up into South Ogden, okay? So I can go down through the line here and it gives me on these listings, it tells me just the basics, right? So this is a nice big house in Kaysville. 
um, you know, 5,900 square feet. So we're going to include that one. Uh, then we're going to go down here. This one's got a six bedroom, four bathroom, 6,200 square feet. We're going to go take a look at that one. Um, and we're just going to click some of these listings that tend to make sense to us, right? So let's look at this one in Ogden and we'll look at that one in Layton. Uh, we've already got that one down there. And let's see, let's put one in Farmington. Um, and let's put one right here in South Weaver. Well, let's just do this one on Meadow Creek. Okay, here we go. So what I've got now is I've got six listings on the buyer tour, right? So this is obviously a Saturday or a, well, these days, every day can feel like a Saturday, depends on um, what you have in your coffee. But if we look at this particular stack here, we've got this, um, we have six listings and we have a lot of geography for them to cover. Now, this is, works really, really well if this is someone who's coming in from out of state, right? So a lot of times when somebody is moving, which I know is, happens to be a, a big section right now, people coming to Utah or people that are tired of whatever's going on in the states that they're currently living in. Um, and so when they come in, they don't know the area very well. So this is your chance to kind of help them orient themselves to the area. Uh, the other thing that happens typically is if they know somebody in Utah, where they jump in your car and you drive them around, you know, the whole area. But what happens when you don't know the area really well? So you can use this to kind of set that up. So we've got these listings. we got six in the hopper here. Uh, and all we're going to do is we're going to come down here. We're going to hit continue, as we always do on the Moxie. And that's going to take us now. So we've done our options, which was our starting point. We've done our search. So we found listings for them that they're going to look at. And now we're looking at the six listings. And we're looking at the map that the uh, Moxie present wants to take them on, right? So keep in mind, we gave them the starting point, right? We told them where they're gonna start. And so what it's doing is it's doing its best to sort of coordinate, if this is the starting point address, how's the best loop here gonna work as we take them around this whole process? Now you can see that it goes one, two, three, four way up in South Ogden, then five way down back in Layton, and six way up in South Ogden. That doesn't make much sense, does it? So you can actually adjust these things. So this is our first one. I think what we ought to do here is instead of it being one, two, three, four, five, um, I think number four needs to come down here. So all I have to do is grab this um, listing, number four, and I can change that and make sure that it, it's part of a particular cluster. So you can drag these around on the map itself. So you can change the order here or you can just drag them in order like this. So if I want to get really crazy and drive them around like a little bit nutty. So now they're starting in Fruit Heights and now they're making their way up. I think it makes more sense to say number three should be up here. So now I've got one, two, you see how we're doing this? Three. And then I think five and four should definitely switch. So we're just going to change the order here. And now we have this continuous map that takes them from uh, uh, down in Kaysville, Farmington area, and it ends them up in Ogden, right? And you just do that by dragging the order. That's it. And if it doesn't look right, if you're not quite sure how it's going to go, just think about how you would like to drive. Do you want to make a you know, loop that goes around and around, or are you going to put them in basically, here's your starting point, and then you're going to take off. So now we're going to hit save order, because we like that. If you want to add more listings, you can certainly add more listings uh, by, by doing that. And by the way, the add more listings is always hidden here at the bottom. It's not really hidden, but it's just always present for you if you want to add more stuff. Uh, and then you can kind of come over here, hit continue. And now we're on our actual presentation. So I'll pause right here. Any questions to this point? It looks like we know how to give them a starting point. We know how to search for properties. Uh, we know how to now drag those properties in a particular order so that we can make them uh, move around the map uh, the way we want. But any other uh, questions or uh, pause at this point? Yeah. So uh, Don had a question about uh, if you were able to look at the Wasatch back and the Wasatch front MLSs at the same time if you're members of both. Don, we have been asking for the two MLSs to play nicely for three years. The, the, the program itself has the technical ability, but the MLSs won't let us commingle the listings. Um, and so we've tried that a couple times. <laughs> you know, we've even said, hey, how about a vote? Let's, let's try to see if we can fix this but they don't let us do the same. So you're literally making two presentations, which for some times is really clumsy, but it's sort of like when you send that to your buyer, you, you have to label them and I'll show you how to do that here, but you'd have to label one, you know, this is Wasatch back and then the next email would say Wasatch front. Um, so they understand the difference, but yeah, it would be nice, but we don't have that ability now. Um, all right, so here we are. We're on the tech trading team. We're gonna go do this buyer tour. 
And just like your Moxie presentation, when you're looking at this screen, every single one of these slides, you're going to be able to click on it here on the left-hand side, and it's going to tell you what it's going to look like to your buyer when they open this up. Just keep in mind, this could be on their phone or, or wherever they've got it. And currently, um, one of the things that we like about Moxie is because these are all hot, they can hover over any one of these listings and take a closer look. So for example, here's listing number four. Here are all their pictures. If you click on the picture, it goes into a larger picture for you automatically. Uh, you can scroll through all the photography. Um, so they could be on their phone looking at this, saying, man, I can't wait to get to this house. Uh, go back and forth uh, between any of the listings. Um, and they can also, because the way the, the map is designed, they can hop in between. So that was listing four, here's listing five. Let's go take a look at listing six, right? Or they can close that and just look at the map and just point and hover on any one of them and say, what's this one, right? And then it highlights that for them and they can go ahead and look at that listing information. If you wanna edit these pages, anytime that you hover over the page in this list, you're gonna get this little highlight button and this little pencil is gonna show up. So you click on the pencil and then it allows you to show uh, the kind of um, preferences for that particular page. Uh, this one is only if you print it, but as you go through these other ones like this listing overview, we click on here, it gives them a summary. Again, all these are hot. So you, if you click on any one of these pages, it's gonna open up right into the MLS listing complete with the pictures uh, to be able to go through. Here's your side-by-side side, side side comparison. This is one of our favorite sheets because uh, it literally lets them just sit there and just scroll through and say, okay, well, what's, what's the difference between all of these, right? Has the price in there, has the HOA dues, has everything that, that they need to, and they can just scroll back and forth and take a look at the kind of properties that they wanna um, uh, at, you know, look at and see like what's different between where they are and where they're at. The status comparisons, uh, this is all active. I would suggest that you don't send a potential buyer a house they can't buy. Um, so this is one of those pages where you say, you know what, I, I don't know if I need to have a status comparison in my buyer tour. So I'm just gonna take that page out. Do you see over here where we have that little pencil and then right next to that says remove? All I'm gonna do is just click remove and now my uh, buyer tour went from nine pages to eight, right? And now we have some of these things like the listing averages. So this is basically saying that of the six that we've chosen for them to take a look at, the average beds is five, the average baths is four and a quarter, average square footage, and then it says the average days on market, which is another good thing. And then here's your dollar per square foot. This dollar per lot square foot is one of the most confusing stats I think in real estate, I'm sure it makes sense to somebody, which is why it's part of this product. I'm gonna show you how to take that out right now. So you come over I here know. to where it says, yeah. Can you also, um, you deleted that page. Can you also, we get a lot of questions about people, but oh, wait, I didn't mean to delete that page. Can we go back and just add a page from the beginning, correct? Great question, yeah. So as a matter of fact, you do exactly that. You go up here to this top where it says add page. So I click on add page, and I'm gonna add it from the library. And we're gonna talk about create new here in just a second. But from the library, here's every page that's part of this um, presentation by default. And you can see the ones that you've already removed because it says add, right? So that one was the status comparison page. So all you gotta do is click add, it goes right back in, right? So it's very, very simple to go ahead and, and manage. And then in order to get back to your page menu, just kind of come up here to the page uh, word up here at the top and click on page. And that'll take you right back to that list that we were looking at before. Yeah, so taking them in or, or taking them out. And by the way, they'll maintain. You see how it kept it kept all the actual listings that we chose? It, it didn't, it does, you don't have to start over. You just bring the page back. Um, so things like price and days on market, that might be good for them to see. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how helpful this graph is, which essentially says if it's more expensive, it tends to stay on the market longer. Huh? If you feel like you want a visual to represent that, go for it. If not, go ahead and pull it out. Um, and then we have price versus size, which surprisingly enough is kind of the same thing. The bigger the house, the more expensive it tends to be. Um, so if you want to look at something like this and go, I just don't see how that's very useful, uh, then go ahead and just remove it. And just as we showed you, you can go ahead and bring it back anytime you want. And so now this is your agent profile page. Um, I highly recommend that everyone goes and tweaks that and makes it cool looking for themselves. The way you do that is go up here to the upper right hand corner where your little, um, if you don't have a picture uploaded yet, it's just an initial. Uh, and what you do is you click on that little box and hit the down arrow there. And then you go to my account and that's gonna open a new tab for you. And while you're in this my account situation, 
You want to hit this pencil right here, and that's what's going to let you change things like your, your uh, contact information, email address, phone number, whatever it is that you want. It also is going to let you write your bio or just cut and paste your bio if you already have it in like a Google Doc or Word Doc or something like that. You can just cut and paste it in there. Again, they probably have seen your bio, you know, either on your website or somewhere else. So this is really more for you to just kind of decide how much of this you want to kind of get into. And then in order to change your picture, all you do is you hit the camera here, and then that's going to let you upload whatever photo you want to show as part of your agent profile. I'm going to close that down. We're going to go return to here. So now we have our buyer tour set, right? Here's our cover page. We know where they're going to start from. We have their listing location map. We know the, the route they're going to take. We know all of that. So how do we get it to them? Well, there's two ways to do that. But the most important thing to understand is if you send it via the Moxie email uh, button right here, if you send it using that little email send, you will create a link between the buyer and their presentation and you and your presentation. And this is why this is super cool. Because if I send it via email and I send it to my client, you can see that I'm just gonna send the presentation. I'm gonna send this to me. So you can kind of see how that works. Um, so we're gonna send it there. Subject is uh, fun times on the tour. And we put in a message that's something really heartfelt. And as Will Cooper would say, makes them feel that you love them. Right, Will? We're gonna love everybody. Uh, and then we, so we have all this. And then this one also asks you to send it if you wanna send a copy to yourself. As the agent, it's not a bad idea to always have a copy of this um, on your own inbox. So let's say that you're out driving around or something, you wanna send it to somebody real quick, you can do that. Because I'm sending it to myself, I'm not gonna actually send a copy to myself. But that goes ahead and sends a presentation, it's gonna uh, send um, to my email inbox. And now what happened is when I open that presentation and I go into any one of those listings, I can now make comments on those listings and those comments feed back to the presentation on your dashboard. So it builds this two-way communication street that allows you to, to, to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that email so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. And bring it over here and let me just share that real quick. So let me do this. Sorry, I'm switching out the shares on you. Um, and I'm gonna show you the old email. Okay. So now this is the email. This is what showed up in my inbox, right? So it's got my, this is why you, you're getting your profile. You want your profile looking, um, you know, extremely awesome. Here's my super touching um, phrase that I typed out for myself uh, to remember how nice it is. Here are the presentation broken down by all six houses that I want you to go see. I could get directions individually to every single one of these, or I could just view the presentation and I'm gonna, show, I'll click on that and then we'll go back to sharing the browser so you can see what the presentation looks like. And here we go. So now this is what my presentation looks like when I open it. So I scroll down and now keep in mind, this is me as the buyer, right? This is, I'm, I'm receiving the presentation you just sent me. So now as I scroll down, I go, okay, here's my map, right? So now let's say, okay, here's our first listing. We're gonna open up that listing. Again, I'm probably on my phone uh, doing the same kind of things. But you see right here, it says calculate the drive time directions. It'll actually give them directions and pop their map up on their phone if they want to. And then look at this. I could say, wow, this is four stars. So I like that. And then in here I go, this house was great. I loved the wine cellar and the meat locker and the large um, hole under the stairs for my nephew. And you could put that all in there. Okay, so you have all these notes and comments. So now, only, only you would have a wine cellar and the meat locker. Yeah, well, because you know, you gotta bounce one with the other. You gotta have a place for Harry to stay too. So I hit save. So now I've created this note. Now again, I'm the buyer. This is me. I'm on my phone. I'm making notes to myself, right? As I do that. And then while that's happening, back in my Moxie present as the person who created this presentation, those notes are coming back, right? So I'm starting to see what the, uh, what the people want to um, think about with that one. And they can do that on every single listing if they chose to, right? Because uh, it goes back and forth. 
So it's very, very friendly. It's very easy for them to, to move around within the listing presentation. And in terms of the buyer tour, and they could do that on every single home. So they can take notes on the home. They take them right on the presentation. Every time they open the presentation, um, you know, they can look at the notes that they just kept. And it makes it very cool, very uh, bi-directional, if you will, uh, on both of those things. So if I go back here to my dashboard, remember they were on listing one. So remember our little circle where it's saving everything for you in real time. Um, so you can see I have a, the buyer tour has been sent, have the little checkbox here that I know it's been sent, it's out there. So if I go in and I look at this in terms of it being an edited presentation and I go to my listings and I go to this listing right here uh, and I open that up, um, it, it allows me, and it's, it's gonna take a second, but it's gonna put my remarks in there from the seller. So it goes back and forth both ways. Um, which is a very, I think it's neat because you can kind of talk about a property. Sometimes getting somebody live on the phone uh, is tough uh, to be able to do that, but this allows them to, to go back and forth and change those um, comments for you um, as it goes in. It's probably going to refresh by the time we get finished the custom pages section. So any questions on that? Awesome. So the last part we're going to cover today is um, we're going to cover how to make a custom page. Now we showed you how to add back a page. Um, into a presentation. I'm gonna do this yesterday with the St. George team. So let's just show you one of these um, cool things. Um, in this particular situation, let's say you built, it doesn't matter if you built a virtual uh, open house, you clicked a buyer tour, you made a, a, a traditional uh, CMA listing presentation. When you're at the pages menu here, the thing that you can do is kind of come over here and you click on the top where it says add page. Now, um, if you saw uh, our video where we did virtual open houses, you saw already how to do one of these things. I'm going to show you how you can kind of use it for a lot of different things. So we're going to create a new one. We're not going to add from the library. We're going to create a new one. On this one, you can build a page from scratch, okay, or you can upload a page. Now, what, what's the difference? Let's say you've already had Jamie's team build you a cool little bio uh, that's got like, you know, your face and a couple of things that you do and maybe some of the charities you work with, and that's already in a PDF. It's already it's been on your, in your um, computer for a long time. You want to add that as part of your presentation to talk about you and some of the other work, then that's exactly what you do. You just upload the PDF and that becomes part of your presentation. I know we have some agents that are big on uh, individual foundations or they have other types of things that are important for them. And so here's the cool part about that is that it allows you um, as, the, as the person who's creating this presentation to build something that's more custom and more designed. Um, and so don't be afraid if you already have some uh, stuff that you like in terms of your PDF, or maybe you create a, a, a one for your team. Maybe you have a, an example of how you uh, work with a mortgage partner. Any one of those types of marketing materials that you probably already have on your computer, you just go ahead and hit the upload PDF right here, and they'll just become part of your Moxie presentation. And it formats it. It does everything that you uh, might imagine. It's really slick uh, to go do that. Um, so, and because that's so simple, I'm just going to show you right quick. You just click on PDF. I go choose a file. Um, and then so it basically lets me go down here. I'm just going to go pick any PDF I happen to have in the hopper here. Um, so here we go. We'll do this one. I don't know what that is, but we'll just upload this. Um, there we go. There's some realtor stuff. Flyer reprint data. Anything. Just hit open and it just uploads right into your, um, your page. Hit upload, and now this is gonna go. It's gonna ask me for a title. See how it says working? It's not quite complete yet, but once you upload your PDF, it'll just show up in this list of pages, right? And there it is. Here's my, my, flyer, my flyer print form data, Woohoo! right? So it's very simple, and it puts in, again, it formats it, it does everything that you need it to do. So that's how you upload a PDF, um, and now let's go look about how we can create a page. So I'm gonna to go to add page, I'm gonna hit create new, and this time I'm gonna build a page, okay? So these are your templates that you can choose from. This is the big wide one. If you're um, looking at our virtual open house uh, video, this is where we inserted like the spotlight uh, tour, the spotlight home tour. Don, I'm still working on that other thing. I'll let you know today. Um, but you're, you have this, this is where we inserted that video, but then this is just like, let's do four pictures or four videos or whatever it is. In this case right here, we got a title and we got four uh, spots. So let's do this. I'm going to hit create. And right up on here, I'm going to do text. And today just happens to be my daughter's birthday. So I'm going to say happy birthday, CL. 
and I'm gonna center justify that. And I don't like that font, so I'm gonna make it something an eight-year-old would dig. And I'm gonna put it in red. And I'm gonna say it's a little bigger than I have it right now. Anyway, you get how you could how how you could play with that. Um, and so this one right here, we're gonna just do large text. And now I have my title. And then inside of each one of these, I could upload pictures of her. So I could go in here and I could say, all right, here's a picture that's already uploaded to my library. So I'm gonna add that as part of this presentation. Uh, you can see it sort of takes it and formats it in a little window the way I need to. Uh, maybe there's a video we're gonna add that we can put it in for something silly. Uh, or I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna upload or from the web, it allows you to go um, search if you found like a picture of a unicorn or something like that. Uh, you could put that in, so I'll give you an example. CL loves unicorns. I don't have the heart to tell her that I actually grow them in my backyard. All right, so here's a, a nice little unicorn image. Wow, decade of unicorns, perfect. So I could take this particular image, it opens up, and then I could take this URL of that particular um, picture if I want, and then I can insert that. Uh, into my presentation. So you can see what I'm doing is I right click on here and I'm just copying the address, right? The, the, uh, the image address, copy image address. I just copy that and I go back to my Moxie presentation and I can paste that image in like this. And it doesn't like that one, of course, because I didn't do this beforehand, but that's how you can grab uh, images or other things off the web or your image library, which is more than likely how you're gonna run this, is just go ahead and hit upload, and then it's gonna open up your file of all your photos on your, on your machine. So you can just upload them however you choose to. Um, and then of course I could populate, um, she loves Yoda, especially Yoda when he's dressed like the Hulk. Um, and you could just do all of these real simple ads, and this way you can kind of build like a custom card. So the way I always think about this is like, if you're doing a buyer tour, it's so worth your time to put in one of these pages that talks a little bit about who you are, or if you already know them, what if, what if you already know that they're having an anniversary or something's going on? I mean, why not take the time to design a little custom page for them that's gonna stand out in their presentation so that when they get to this part um, in their presentation, it's all ready to rock. Uh, so once we have those uh, images or videos loaded, hit save. Oh, let me show you how to add a YouTube video, sorry. Because Jamie, we're never going to miss an opportunity to, to market our YouTube BHHS learning page. Yep, and I was just thinking too, all the um, uh, neighborhood videos we have would be great yep. to upload in there. If they're looking in Cottonwood Heights, you can add the Cottonwood Heights video. If they're debating between um, between Sugar House and General Salt Lake, you can add those two videos just to kind of show off you know, some of your capabilities as well. So just keep that in mind. So in this case, we've got a YouTube video here. Um, again, this could be one of those neighborhood videos or anything great. I'm just copying the URL from the YouTube. I hit copy and then I jump back over to my uh, presentation here and I click on video because what little girl doesn't want to watch a training from Jake Breen on her eight year old birthday? So now we put that in there, it's already embedded, right? So it's all laid out, but it gives you a chance to really kind of, you know, get in here and see how you can do a bunch of cool stuff. Um, and that's how you design a custom page. So once you have that done, you hit the save button. It's gonna ask you for a title. We're just gonna call this the, the birthday, birthday girl, like that, hit save. And that's gonna go ahead and do saving, saving, saving. And remember that little circle means it's just making itself a part of that. Once we have it, we just can click on the X right here. As we go back to our page, now it's right here as part of our presentation, right? So one of the things that you can uh, really get used with Moxie is when you start doing things like the buyer tour, you start adding these little pages in. It's, it's something that Jamie and her team have been telling us for years, which is the more authentic this thing is, the more it's gonna resonate with whoever's looking at it. So even if you took a minute or two to upload a personal photo, photo of you and your dogs, whatever else, it really does a nice job of introducing maybe who you are and, and what you're doing. I mean, Jamie mentioned the neighborhood videos. You can see how it already formats it perfectly so that when they look at this page, like if we did a little preview on this, um, on, the, on the page, 
the way it looks is so cool because you, you open it up, it's on your whole uh, screen and all these four images are going, you can play them at different times and do all kinds of neat stuff like that. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity to really build something special. The other thing that um, is important is that after you've built these presentations and you've sort of taken out the pages that you don't like and added pages that you do like, you come down here to the very bottom and at the very beginning of this presentation, we picked our default buyer tour template. Well, this is the template you've created. So once you have the number of pages you want and the order you want them in, then you could basically come here and just save this as a template that makes sense to you. And then that time, next time you make a buyer tour, you don't have to go out and remove those three graph pages. You just, just say, I want, I want Joe's uh, template, right? I'm using, um, you know, whatever, Melinda's template. And you, you save your own template so that you build these presentations and they look and behave the way you want them to. Um, and that's really what we wanted to cover today. So uh, that, that takes us to about 42 minutes of me talking straight. So I'll go ahead and pause and we'll see what else is, uh, is out there. Yeah, and uh, we had a question on the chat. I'm not sure exactly what it means, but maybe you could take a look at it, Joe, when we could unmute Lucia. And then I also would love for you to show, because we talked about the neighborhood reports, guys, I'm a huge fan of leveraging the assets we already have um, they're quality assets, they're for you to use. So show them one more time how to add a neighborhood video to any page. Yep. Um, and uh, maybe that's the opening scene is it's, um, you know, welcome to Park City or welcome sure. to Southern Utah. That's great. So uh, with Lucia, there's not better graphs to show. The, the default graphs that they put in there, there are three default graphs. They're just bar charts and they're plot graphs. Um, if you like the graphs or if you have a customer, a, a potential client that's really into graphs, I'd suggest like maybe doing some of those right off of the MLS. Because keep in mind, if you build some of those market reports off the MLS, you can download those. And the, the format that those are downloaded in are PDF. So you can literally download a neighborhood report on the MLS, save it to your desktop, and then just upload it in your CMA because it's already a PDF. It's already formatted for you. Um, so that's the way that we could do that. All right. So let's go back in and edit our birthday page, right? So I'm going to come over, over my birthday page. I'm going to click on the pencil, which says edit. And then we go like this. We're back into our box that lets us uh, do some things. And this time we're going to add a neighborhood video. So I go over here to my BHHS YouTube. And even though we just searched YouTube learning, we're going to search Utah properties. So learning is where you're going to find all of the classes and those kinds of things. And the Utah properties page is where you're going to find all these neighborhood videos. So in this case, we do, we do have, um, we have a, a, a Davis County one. So let me just get that real quick. Here we go, Farmington and Davis County. So this is where they're gonna move. So all I do is I get this particular video. There's two quick ways you could do that. You can literally do it right up here at the top and just copy it, right click and copy of the URL there. Or YouTube also makes it really easy down here on the share button where you can click share and then just hit copy from here. And then I can hit close and I'm going back to my presentation. I go back to my screen here and I go to video. And I go to this URL, paste it, click add, and there it is, right? So it lets you do all, all those kinds of things. Now, in our, we already have a name for this page. So all I have to do is hit save again. I don't have to give it a title and such. Uh, I just hit save and then I close it. And now when I give my presentation, after my agent profile, and I scroll down, here's that page. And it's ready to go with both those embedded YouTube videos. Awesome. <clears throat> and Joe, one more thing, go back out and just to the basic login page, you logged in, you're getting in there. And how do Dashboard. I start a, cost, a custom page? Where do I start? Because I think a couple people are like kind of deep down in this and um, thinking about how, wait, where do I start? So when you come from here, right, let's say that you're, you're, you're made a presentation and now you want to add a custom page to it. Um, one of the biggest things to get used to with Moxie is you want to click on the picture. But when you click on the picture, what happens is that opens up the presentation. It doesn't let you edit the presentation. It opens the presentation as if the person you sent it to was looking at the presentation. So when you're going to edit the presentation, you're going to live by the pencil. Right, so here's that pencil on the upper right hand corner. So let's say we're gonna add one to the tech training team buyer tool we just built. So I'm gonna click on my pencil right here. That's gonna take us into our familiar 
um, menu at the top right here. And all I'm gonna do at this point in time, I don't have to go through any of these things again, so I don't have to keep pressing continue. I can actually just jump right here to the word pages. So I click on pages. And at the top here, there's the add page button. So I click on add page. And instead of adding from library, we're gonna create the new one. And instead of uploading the PDF, we're gonna build a page. And that takes us to this little screen here where we choose the template of the page we're gonna build. And then once you hit create, you're into that custom page um, wizard right there. And that's how you do it. Excellent, any additional questions? Fabulous. Well, Joe and I are going to render this video, get it up on the intranet, um, make sure that you realize that there are all of these recordings. Uh, if you have any questions, otherwise just shoot uh, Joe or myself an email. Be happy to help you. And you guys have a great weekend and we'll see you after Memorial Day. Happy Friday. Thanks everybody. Take care all.